Hi, I'm Kathy Connard, a tech rep for Turf Trade. Some of you may remember me from my water management consulting days. Well, there's one thing that still holds true, and that is water management is my focus. It doesn't matter if you're a golf course superintendent, a sports turf manager, or a landscaper. Water is critical to everything that you do. For those of you that are dealing with water movement or water management problems, I'm going to show you how you can conduct a water drop penetration test. This is a test that will help you to measure the level of soil water repellency in your soils. That way you can see if that's the reason that you're having water management issues. So what is soil water repellency? Soil water repellency is when there are coatings that form on your soil particles. And these coatings have a very waxy uh, residue so that they repel water. And unfortunately, soil water repellency can be caused by maintenance practices that, that you do every day and you have to do every day. You know, mowing, um, dethatching, aerification to break down the thatch mat layer. What happens is the microbes decompose these organic substances, and that's part of what causes these waxy residues to form on the uh, soil particles. The other thing is that frequent wet to dry cycles can exacerbate these problems as well. Um, so if we have, tend to have a you know very wet spring and then go into a very dry summer and, and uh, you know we go back and forth between the wet to dry, this can also exacerbate. Uh, soil water repellency on the soil particles. Soil water repellency has a very negative impact on how water, nutrient, and soil sprays not only move into the soil, so off the surface and infiltrate into the soil, but also how they get distributed throughout that root zone. You have a non-uniformity because again, parts of the uh, soil have these water repellent particles and parts may not. It also impacts drainage. Rarely do we see no soil water repellency um, within a soil. Typically, there's, you know, from minor to severe. Um, cases where you may see a, a clean soil particle, um, possibly if it's a you know, new property, 12 months, 8 to 18 months um, old. Um, and and it, you know, the soil water repellency that the waxy residues haven't had a chance to build up, possibly. Um, but in, in most of the properties that I've worked with, um, there's been some level of soil water repellency. And if you know your level of soil water repellency, then you know what management practices you can put in place to help you to increase the uniform movement of water nutrients and soil sprays. Before you pull your soil cores, you're going to need a few tools to help you conduct the water drop penetration test. Of course, you're going to need your soil probe. You're going to need a metal tray. Um, I just use a cookie sheet. That's what you're going to dry your uh, soil cores on. You need a pipette. You need distilled water. You need a stopwatch. I just use my cell phone for the stopwatch and you're going to need a notebook to record your results. Now here comes the fun part. Divide the area up that you're going to test into a grid. Then pull at least four cores from each area of the grid. What I do is once I pull the sample out, I pop it out into a paper towel and I roll it like a cigar. And then I put it into a plastic bag and I label the bag. Be sure that you clearly describe each area measured. For instance, uh, you know, 11 green, front right. However you label it, make sure that it's easy for you to understand and remember where you took that sample from. And the reason that I roll it up into a paper towel like a cigar is one, it keeps my core intact. The second reason is when I get it home or back to the office, I can unroll it and it's still intact onto my um, cookie sheet so that it can dry. So the, and that's the second step. Once you pull all of these cores, they're going to need to air dry. It usually takes about two weeks. Um, if you haven't recently sprayed chemicals, 
and you have an oven available, that'll speed up the process because you can oven dry it and that will only take a couple of hours. Um, but it's very, very important before you start the testing for these soil cores to be extremely dry. Once they've dried, now we can start measuring for soil water repellency. So how do we do that? We take the pipette and we take the distilled water and you're going to drop one milliliter droplets of distilled water on each core. You're gonna start at the turp canopy and you're gonna work downwards and you're gonna measure every half a centimeter. So what you're going to do is you drop one drop at the top of the turf canopy. You're gonna hit the stopwatch and you're gonna sit there and wait till that drop completely goes into that soil core. And then you're gonna record the time in seconds that it took that droplet to infiltrate the surface. Now, if you have severe water repellency, don't be surprised if you're sitting there for a minute, two minutes, even longer. Um, this is the most tedious part of the water drop penetration test is watching those drops of water and waiting for them to go in and not taking your eye off the clock. Make sure you record your results after each drop goes in too. Um, and what I do is I, I just set up a grid. Um, once again, I, you know, you set up like a little spreadsheet and that way it's easy to put the numbers in and then go back and take a look at them. So once you have all the measurements now recorded, we can go and take a look at what do those numbers mean? Here's a chart that will help you translate the results that you got. And what I do, especially if you end up um, setting up a spreadsheet in Excel, you know, and, and putting all those numbers that you recorded into Excel, I color code them. So all of my soil cores that are wettable, less than five seconds, water went in very quickly, you know, maybe I'll make them, you know, blue. Um, those that are slightly water repellent, you know, five to 60 seconds, it took for them to um, wet up. You know, maybe I'll make them green. Um, so you get the idea. You know, strongly water repellent. You know, maybe they're yellow. Severely water repellent. Maybe they're red. By color coding them and and adding that extra column, um, one, it gives me information at a quick glance. Um, so I know what I'm dealing with on what areas that I'm testing. And when I go back year to year or you know, spring and then versus fall or however often you're doing these tests because you're gonna wanna repeat them once you start a management program because you wanna see if what you're using and what you're doing is actually working. Um, so by color coding them, it's just a really quick way to be able to go back and see um, if you're making progress in those areas. Okay, you have the results of your water drop penetration test, and you know you have soil water repellent soils that need to be treated. So what do you do? Well, there are chemical solutions. Um, the first thing that comes to people's minds are soil wetting agents um, because they help to attach to water repellent uh, soil particles, creating attachment sites for water now to adhere to those soil particles. But there are so many soil wetting agents available out there, so you need to make sure you have the right one for your specific uh, situation. And I'm actually working on a presentation on how to determine which is the best uh, type of soil wetting agent for your, um, for your specific uh, situation. So be on the lookout for that one. Um, you can also add uh, carbon. There are lots of carbon-based soil amendments that are available. Carbon does help to increase the water holding capacity of soils. Uh, humic acids do the same. Uh, but what if your soil water repellent problems and your water movement problems are being caused because you have a sodium issue in your soils? So it's being caused by the salts. Um, in that case, you may want, need a calcium sulfate or gypsum. Um, there's also synthetic acids for those of you dealing with poor water quality in your bicarbonates, and um, that's what's causing some of your water movement problems. 
you may want to look into the synthetic acids that are available. Um, don't forget that you don't just want to use a chemical solution. Cultural solutions are just as important. Um, when you're dealing with water repellent soils, water takes the path of least resistance. So it's going to go down and through the areas that are very easy uh, for it to get through, which will cause an imbalance in your air to water ratios in the soil and if you have too much air or too much water um, and you have that imbalance you're not going to have a very good uh, environment for, for growing so it's very important to make sure that you're still aerifying um, if it's in the middle of the season you, you can't go big and you can't go deep I get that but if you can needle tine um, so very important um, so aerification top dressing um, you know, make sure that those practices are incorporated in uh, to what you're doing if you're dealing with, with water repellent soils. And there are other ways that you can test as well to make sure that water is going where you need it to go. And that's not just with um, the water drop penetration test, because as, as you saw, if you do have um, moderate to severe soil water repellency, it is very time consuming to do these tests. But if you have a TDR moisture meter, um, a great way, again, for you to uh, be able to see what the moisture levels are. And the new 350s now test for salts as well. Um, so you, you can you know, take a look at that you know, in the spring, in the summer. You know, are there changes? Um, and make sure you are getting your soil and water tested, both chemical and physical. Because sometimes the water management problems can be because of a physical problem or can be because of a chemical problem you know salts are high by carbonates so good information to have so that you can put together all of the different results and all of the different um, you know your different findings throughout your property to see what actually is causing your um, water movement problems because it may be a combination of soil water repellency and something else. Thank you so much for listening. If you have questions on this presentation or would just like to talk to me about some of your water management problems, please feel free to give me a call or text me at 609-477-0471. You can also shoot me an email at kathyc at theturftrade.com. If you're interested, I have other presentations on YouTube as well on amino acids. I welcome you to take a look at them. Thank you.